Fairies are part of a long tradition in mythology. From cultures all over the world, they often represent an intermediary race, mystical creatures living in a supernatural existence, but parallel to us in many ways, somewhere between the realms of human and angels. Fairies have their origins in ancient mythologies and pagan beliefs. The Greeks had their dryads and nymphs, spirits of nature that lived in trees and rivers. In Celtic mythology, the Tuatha de Danann were a race of deities and supernatural beings who lived in the sea or fairy mounds. Germanic folklore brought us elves and other nature spirits, often depicted as both benevolent and malevolent forces. The most direct origin might date back to mythology of the old Norse gods, in which little beings with the most delicate figures lived in underground caves or in the crags of rocks and were known for their wealth, which they were very good at accumulating because they did whatever it took to get what they wanted, even if it was evil. Fairy lore became so common for Scyther describes in most northern countries of Europe Few families were without a shrewd or knavish sprite. Depending on how a family treated the Fae in their life lives could be made easier or much, much harder. As Christianity spread across Europe, the perception of these beings shifted. Early Christian thinkers like Origen and Athanasius had varied views on fairies, ranging from benevolent spirits to demonic entities. Over time, fairies were often recast as fallen angels, not good enough for heaven, but not evil enough for hell. They gained the power to set evil spirits on humans to this effect. They had powers over unbaptized children and could make them grow up to be cruel or harbingers of bad luck. This demonization contributed to widespread fear and superstition surrounding fairies in medieval Europe. As Christianity spread, pagan fairy-like figures were often incorporated into folklore as smaller, less powerful beings. Celtic Christian traditions like that of St. Columba of Iona blended Christian faith with reverence for the mystical fairy realm, as exemplified by his statement, My Druid is Christ. St. Patrick also adapted to ancient Celtic beliefs in fairies in his efforts to convert Ireland to Christianity, as the Bible itself contains references to angels and spiritual beings. Contemporary Christian thinkers like C.S. Lewis, J.R.R. Tolkien and David Bentley Hart have defended the existence of fairies and argued for their importance in resisting secular modernity. However, a dismissive attitude towards fairy folklore remains common among many modern Christians who view these narratives as mere superstitions. In summary, Christianity's influence on fairy folklore evolved from early condemnation to incorporation and even reverence in some traditions, while modern Christian perspectives range from defense to dismissal of these mystical beings. The complex relationship reflects the broader challenges Christianity faced in supplanting pagan polytheism with monotheism. If you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe so you can see all the videos I publish each week. Interestingly, the depiction of fairies also has roots in Persian mythology. The Pari were supernatural winged entities originating from pre-Islamic Persian folklore. They were often described as beings of great beauty with complex moral characteristics. In early Persian beliefs, the Pari were seen as a class of evil spirits, but over time they developed a more positive connotation, being integrated into Islamic folklore as morally ambiguous creatures. By the 10th century, the Pari had become a template for the exquisite beauty of the beloved in Persianate poetry and folklore, echoing the Arabic concept of the Huri. Over time, they evolved into more benevolent and morally complex creatures. These Persian Pari influenced European conceptions of fairies during the Renaissance, blending with local myths and legends. The integration of Persian mythology into European folklore is fascinating. The Renaissance saw an enormous amount of fairy tales composed and published, first in France and then spreading across Europe. Two key Renaissance authors who drew on these Persian fairy folklore elements were the Italian writers Giovan Francesco Straparola and Gian Battista Basile, blending classical mythology with emerging literary forms. Their fairy tale collections, 
such as Straparola's Le Piacevoli Notti, blended classical mythology with emerging modern literary forms, reflecting the propensity and resistance to moral reinterpretation of these tales. In the 18th and 19th centuries, fairies gained further prominence in literature. The Brothers Grimm were instrumental in preserving traditional German folk tales. Their collection, Children's and Household Tales, published in 1812, contained over 200 stories that became classics in the fairy tale genre. Their focus was on preserving cultural heritage and moral lessons embedded in these traditional stories. Hans Christian Andersen, on the other hand, pioneered original literary fairy tales in the mid-19th century. His works, like The Little Mermaid and The Ugly Duckling, often contain deeper social commentary and psychological depth, moving beyond mere preservation of traditional stories. Fairies have not only been a significant part of literature, but also played a role in reflecting and shaping cultural values across Europe. For instance, during the Victorian era, fairy imagery saw a resurgence, possibly as a longing for a more magical past amidst rapid industrialization. Fairies influenced different aspects during the Victorian era. They influenced romantic literature and folklore. Romantic writers like William Shakespeare, Edmund Spencer and the Brothers Grimm popularized fairy folklore and mythology in their works. This provided a rich source of inspiration for romantic artists. The Victorian era's fascination with fairies also deeply influenced romantic art. Artists like Richard Dadd and William Blake depicted fairies in intricate and fantastical scenes, blending the real and the supernatural. These works provided an escape from the industrialized world and reflected cultural anxieties and desires. Paintings depicting scenes from Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, such as those by William Blake and Henry Fuseli, became highly popular during the Romantic period, they blending the fantastical and the real. Romantic artists sought to capture the intersection of the fantastical fairy realm and the natural human world. This is evident in paintings like Blake's Oberon, Titania and Puck with fairies dancing, and Fuseli's Titania and Bottom. These works blurred the lines between reality and imagination, reflecting the romantic fascination with the supernatural and the power of the human mind. They focus on escapism and symbolism. The Victorian era was marked by rapid industrialization and social upheaval. Fairy paintings offered a form of escapism, allowing artists and viewers to immerse themselves in a world of fantasy and imagination. Fairies were also used as symbolic representations, reflecting cultural anxieties, desires, and changing attitudes towards gender roles and sexuality. They receive influence of German Romantic painters. German Romantic painters like Moritz von Schwind and Ludwig Schnorr von Karlsfeld had a significant influence on the development of fairy painting in the Romantic era. Their distinctive Germanic style can be seen in the work of British artists like Daniel MacLeese, who incorporated fairy motifs into his paintings. Today, fairies remain a ubiquitous presence in children's literature, fantasy fiction, and popular media. Modern interpretations often depict them as tiny, delicate creatures with insect-like wings, a significant shift from their ancient representations as powerful human-sized beings. The evolution of fairies from ancient mythologies to modern-day media highlights their enduring appeal and the way they mirror societal changes. While early fairies were deeply connected to nature, and the mystical contemporary fairies often reflect more human traits and social structures. Some people believe that the fairies could send evil spirits in the form of beautiful women charming men with their song and dance to the point that they would commit heinous crimes for them when their souls were black with the sins they had committed for the evil spirit. They would be taken to hell to serve and be tortured by the demons who lived there for eternity despite the beauty, youth, and luxurious leisure of their existence. They were said to be inherently sad as well. They remembered that they had been cast from heaven and could never return in this. Humans had an advantage upon their death. They could go to heaven and live there for the rest of eternity. 
They were also used to explain and blame mental or physical diseases or disabilities. Fairies have also been used symbolically to represent societal anxieties and desires. For example, the Victorian era saw a resurgence of fairy imagery, which some scholars linked to a longing for a more magical, innocent past amidst rapid industrialization. Fairies have a long and storied history, from ancient mythologies to modern-day adaptations. They change from their ancient Celtic and Germanic origins. They shift from malevolent to benevolent depictions. In ancient Celtic and Germanic folklore, fairies were often portrayed as mischievous or even malevolent beings capable of harming humans, their reduction in size and power. In earlier mythologies, fairies were sometimes depicted as being human-sized or even larger. They increased anthropomorphization. Ancient fairy-like beings were often more closely tied to the natural world, with stronger connections to trees, rivers and other elements of the landscape. They are more commercialized. Fairies have become a highly commodified element of popular culture, appearing in everything from children's books to home decor. They continue to enchant and inspire us, revealing much about our cultural and societal evolution. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the world of fairies. Let me know what you think about the evolution of the fairies and which representation of them you prefer and why. Also, let me know what videos you would like to see next. Until next time, keep the legends alive.